And we are live. Hi, everybody. Mark Graven here, joined by Billy Taylor. We're starting a couple of minutes late, which is completely my fault. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but really thrilled uh, to be joined by Billy. He is the CEO of his company, Linked XL. He's the author of the book, The Winning Link, and he's also the global head of diversity, equity, and inclusion for AME. Billy, how are you today? I'm doing well, Mark. Great, excited to be here uh, and excited for the upcoming conference. So I'm, ex- I'm, 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 I'm in a great place. Well, good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It is coming up just in uh, in three weeks. There's still an opportunity for people to register and, and come join us. I'll be there. Billy's going to be moderating a panel, and we're going to chat about that today. So the dates for the AME International Conference, and again, that's the Association of Manufacturing Excellence, open to people from many industries, not just manufacturing. It's going to be held in Cleveland, October 3rd to November 2nd. There are workshops. There are the main dates of the conference. You can learn more at ame.org. Um, and we'll put a, a link in the chat here in a minute. Billy's moderating a, a main stage keynote panel titled Inclusion Redefined, Unlocking Potential, Fueling Innovation, and Empowering Success. So, so Billy, you know, I'd just love to hear in your words, you know, what do you think is going to be coming in, in the panel discussion? And, and, you know, tell us about this theme of inclusion redefined. Well, I, it, it's, it's a different way of looking at your work, looking at and managing and leading the workforce of the future. And, you know, you think post-COVID, uh, people were got, got accustomed to work from home. They had to bring in a new trust factor uh, when people were working from home. But it's a, it's a group of, of leaders that have done it right, that have led through these transformations, and they both succeeded and failed at certain things, and we'll be able to tell those testimonies and give people tools to put in their own tool bag to lead their teams, and so, which which is great, and the panelists, you know, um, Jessica Sublet, she is a CEO of Bounce Innovation Hub that helps startups, uh, and she is a very, very talented young leader. And she'll tell about how she had imposter syndrome Mm. and how she led through that. Uh, And and so often that felt, but it's rarely talked about. Uh, And so we have uh, uh, Victoria. Uh, She's from uh, Iceland. Uh, And I went to visit uh, Iceland to do uh, a keynote at at their event. Uh, It was heavy populated uh, by female leaders that were in attendance. Mm-hmm. And to hear their stories, um, and you also have um, Tiffany Collins, who's at Avery. Uh, and she's a dynamic leader when I was at Goodyear. She's led multiple turnarounds uh, from a hiring and leadership, building the bench strength. Uh, and then Keith Hamilton, uh, is vice president of Georgia Pacific. Keith, uh, he he has built a a team around diversity and inclusion. He's putting the best people on the field that are different. And he's he's talking about how to embrace their differences. So it's going to be an exciting panel, fun, energetic. Uh, So it's not going to be the typical panel where you sit there and listen and ask questions. I, I, I will say that. I think somehow you got muted, Mark. I did. That is yet another mistake that I've, uh, a couple mistakes I've made here this morning. Yeah, I, it's going to be an exciting panel. Uh, we don't have to worry about anyone on stage being muted by mistake, do we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, I mean, a steam panel with uh, a lot to, to talk about and a, a great opportunity for attendees. Um, to ask questions. In fact, uh, to the people attending live here, if you've got questions for Billy about lean or leadership or, or, or trust in, in, in different ways, there's uh, a lot that we can um, talk about here while we have um, Billy. So, you know, tell us more, you know, Billy, from your perspective and what you're hearing from people. You mentioned the trust factor with more people working from home. Uh, people are out of sight in different ways of their direct supervisors or, or their teams? 
How how is that different than the need for trust when somebody is you know off in the gemba and like are the, are you know what are they doing if a manager is not directly you know seeing their employee? Well, and, and it comes back to ownership, right? When when I can trust you to drive change to do your job, it's around extreme ownership because when people I, I, I often say in the absence of ownership comes blame, mm. and so when people don't own their performance, they don't own what uh, their part is in the strategy. When things fail or go off the rails, people tend to blame. And so the trust factor, um, trust is built, right, on small accomplishments, you, repeatability. Uh, when people uh, do things and they're consistent with it, even if they fail, if you're transparent, right, you create this thing called, called psychological safety, not only between the leader and you, but in reverse, you and the leader. And that's where trust comes in. You know, it's not just at work. Uh, it's even in your relationships, mm -hmm. right? The value proposition is strengthened based on trust. Mm -hmm. I believe what you tell me. You do what you say you're going to do. And so in this in this new world of how we work, uh, that, that autonomy is built on trust. Mm -hmm. And when, when you when you de destroy that trust, then it's difficult. People want you to clock in. People want to know where you are at all times of the day. In today's workforce, that's just not it's not the way uh, the new workforce does business. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm I, I'm going to take ownership of the mistake I made. Uh, you know that that led to us starting late. I made a time zone error. I will admit that. I, I think it's you know I. I admit my mistakes and, and take ownership of that. I hope I didn't uh, destroy too much trust with you, Billy, if the next time we do something like this, you, you may be, you know, uh, yeah. you, you might be right to have me double track check or triple check. So my, my apologies again for that. No, it, it, but this thing about this, and this wasn't scripted. This comes back to trust. Mm. I trust you. It wasn't even about the time zones. It wasn't. Just be honest. I saw the note. I called him. I trust him. We have access to each other like that. Yeah. We're faithful like that. We pick up each other's call mm -hmm. because we trust each other. And so what do we do? We're like, let's go. We're ready. Yeah. And so when you have that type of autonomy, that type of trust, you can be agile. Mm -hmm. you, you can move accordingly without any disruptions or minimal disruptions. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. Right? And if you don't have that, that's when your organizations fall apart. That's when leaders fall apart. Because often when I go into organizations, Mark, it is rarely the shop floor that's causing your organization to fail. Yeah. It's the leadership, the lack of trust in leadership. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I go in some meetings, right, I'm going to date myself. It's like a, the old John Travolta movie, uh, Staying Alive, right? Everybody's. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I stand alive, right? They're just throwing yeah. people under the bus because there's lack of trust. Right. And you have to build that. I mean, that's including the janitor. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I lead organizations, I trust the janitor, you know, based on our relationships. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you, um, in a way, pulled the end on cord. You had a concern. You called me. I saw you were calling and, you know, we, we addressed it and, you know, I'd, I'd like to think you, you had no reason to be afraid to um, call and, and raise the concern. I'm, you know, and, you know, I'm not your boss. I'm in no position of, of power here. But, you know, think of different workplaces where people are afraid mm -hmm. to speak up, where they are afraid to pull the and on cord. What, what can leaders do to try to build trust and, and let people know it is OK to raise a concern? Well, I'll start with, with you. We often talk about visual management in, in companies. And, 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 you know, when we go visual management, it's red or green, right? And so, you know, what, does, what do leaders do or how can leaders change the dynamic or the environment? First, celebrate the red. Create a space where you can celebrate the red. Now, you shouldn't like the red, mm -hmm. but you create this environment where it's okay, right? Because once you celebrate the red, you can harvest the green. And so leaders have to create that, that environment 
it's like with my kids, I, I, and you're going to hear me often go back to the things that drive businesses drive households. I remember telling my kids, listen, if you're honest with me, I won't get mad at you. I may not like it, but I won't get mad at you. Yeah. If you lie and try to hide something, I'm going to be upset. Now, let's go back. Why? One, you can't manage a secret, right? And so if my kids are in the middle of something that's not productive or could be damaging, if they don't tell me, we've got bigger problems. Mm -hmm. If they can come talk to me, I can likely give them some advice and help them work through it. It's the same with my team. If I find a defect or I find something that's going to derail the team and I don't say anything, well, that can be a bigger problem. Now, I want to testify as a leader coming up. I remember sitting in meetings and I know something and I sit on my hands because it wasn't psychologically safe. Mm -hmm. And as my mom would say, you could be right, but you're dead right. Mm -hmm. When you're dead right, you're not around. And so when leaders don't create that, that, that type of environment, then these organizations, especially the new workforce, and the new workforce is not talking about your age. It's the mindset. When I say the new workforce, the mindset of how we work, how we win. It's different. Yeah. Hmm. You know, and, and so as, as leaders, I coach executives, uh, senior executives of the Fortune 500 companies. And that's been the core coaching topic that I've been helping them address on how to lead this new mindset of a workforce. Because, you know, America doesn't have a hiring problem today. They have a retention problem. Mm -hmm. See, they're hiring, uh, some of the companies I've worked with, they've hired three workforces. If there's 800 people, they've hired 2,400. The problem is the funnel at the bottom is almost as wide as the funnel at the top as yeah. we're getting people in. And so the change is how do you create those cultures where people not only need to be there to get a check, but they want to be there. Yeah. And it's psychological. It's, it's psychological. And you talk about that need for psychological safety to speak up in a meeting, to pull the and on cord, to get involved in different ways. Like if, if, there's not that sense of psychological safety. I, I think it can be uh, misguided or even dangerous to say things to people like, well, you should be brave. You should be courageous. I mean, it's, it's, it, I don't think that's necessarily good advice. Um, what, what, what do you think about trying to find that balance of when somebody should test the waters a little bit without putting themselves completely in the line of fire? Well, I, I would say this. First of all, if you're the re the person that's bringing the issue to the table, the how you bring it to the table mm -hmm. is just as important as what you bring to the table. Right? I often say, don't be cute. What I mean by that, don't come in and be a smarty pants or because now you're going to get under my skin. All right? Yeah. If you come in, hey, Billy, what this and, and I'm sitting there and I'm listening. Where if you come in and say, hey, Billy, I got a problem. I'd like to discuss it with you. Even if it's something I don't think is that relevant, I'll say, can you can we take this offline right after the meeting? Because uh -huh. I don't want to derail the meeting or something. But it's still psychologically safe. Because think about everyone in the room is watching. Right? And if I see you get your head chopped off or, or, or yelled at or belittled, I'm going to say, I don't want that to be me, so I'm not going to say anything. But if I see, hey, Mark brought that to him. Something went wrong. And, and Billy again. talked to him. Seconds. It's different. It's different. It's different. And so leaders have to be very deliberate, not intentional, deliberate on how they create this psychological safety. It's what they say is how they respond. And do they follow up? Because I don't, you know, I, I, I don't. Yes, 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 yes. There are several no, 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 no's. Mm -hmm. 
And so my psychological thing, uh, and, and, I, and I often do this when I do keynotes, I'll say, write this down, okay? And when I say, write this down, that's a call to action. And people start to let their guards down, they let their shields down. But Mark, when someone brings something to me, I'll ask, what do you need from me? Now, what do you want from me? What do you need from me to help you resolve the issue? Now, let me be very clear. Let me give an example. I want a steak. I need to eat. They're two different things. Right. And so when I break that down, often people, when you ask that question, they backpedal. They think about it. They reflect. Then they come back forward. Because the next question is once you give them what they need, it's a matter of what they accept. Hmm. Right. Their standards, they may be compromising on their standards. They may be compromising on how they lead. We can say we want a safe work environment and we write safety policies. But when we walk out on the shop floor, we walk by people not wearing their personal protective equipment. We walk by people not hmm. following those policies. So guess what? That's the new standard. Right. So what they write down. So when you look at those things, what you accept, again, what I say is what you accept, you cannot change. Mm. Right? Whatever you walk by, if you're in a relationship that has these issues, what are you accepting? Right? And so as a leader, I used to walk through some of the, the, the most notorious plants around management and leadership conflict, union environments. What never changed was my standard. Hmm. And the results were, were repeatable. Whereas the union are union free. Great leaders set the standard. They set the standards on how they're going to behave. They set the standards on how they're going to operate. And so when you're building trust, if you're consistent on your standards, you'll win. Because the saying in, in operational excellence is be hard on the process so you can lead easy on the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And leaders that want to keep moving the standard, it, it, it's different. You know, I, I my, my daughter was in town yesterday for an event. She flew in from Atlanta. But her mom asked her a question. And my daughter, 28, responded, yes, ma'am. And I just looked up, right? I could hear, yes, ma'am. That's the standard. Mm -hmm. Be respectful. Be courteous. That's the standard, right? And that didn't just happen because from the ride from the airport to home, we say be polite. No, that's 28 <laughs> years of what the standard was. That right. is, you know? And, and about reinforcing the standard if it wasn't being lived. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Right. And so yeah. that's when you talk about building trust. That's when you talk about it's what you do. Because leaders, when I say should be working on the business, supporting those people working in the business. Yeah. And as you get closer to the source of where things happen, that's where they're working in the business. Mm -hmm. Right. And as a leader, even at, when I was running North America Goodyear, I had many resources. People did what I kind of, the, 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 when I initiated a, a, a project or an assignment or a task or a strategy, they did it. That's Billy Taylor. He's head of operations. Mm -hmm. Well, when I started my own company, I wasn't head of operation. So I had to be influential. I had to be very influential and you become influential by doing what you say you're going to do, being consistent on delivering what the promise is. And that's just not in numbers, right? Because mm -hmm. leaders that think you should measure everything that matters, that's the most important thing, are missing it. Mm -hmm. Because when you're talking leading people, everything that matters can't be measured. Well, a lot of wisdom here today from uh, Billy Taylor and um, this comment here from Kim Humphrey, the leader of AME. And I agree with her. We look forward to hearing more from you, Billy, at the AME conference in Cleveland this month. So again, um, October 30th, November 2nd are the dates. Go to AME.org um, to learn more about the conference. You'll, you'll see that right on the front page. 
of uh, the website. Um, again, I invite if anyone in the live audience has um, questions, you know, go ahead and add them here. But maybe one last question or one last topic for you, Billy. When you talk about being intentional around creating trust, creating standards, being intentional around excellence, you know, it seems like uh, there, there's a similar a similar need to be intentional about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so, you know, the question I wanted to ask you was, you know, thinking about events like these and conferences, how, how would you describe the importance of inclusion and representation um, on stage in venues and forums like this? Well, I'm going to start with the word opportunity, right? You want to provide the opportunity for people to be their authentic self, the opportunity for people from all different backgrounds to come to this conference, this conference, the opportunity, right, to contribute, whether you're a speaker, whether you're hosting a workshop, the opportunity to feel comfortable. That's diversity, equity, and inclusion. The opportunity to, to play on a level playing field. The opportunity. And so when I'm talking about being deliberate and intentional, that's being deliberate about putting the opportunities out there, right? Not quotas, hmm. not numbers. It's opportunities so that you can level the playing field, right? And so I, I, I pride myself on providing people with opportunities because there's a two, side, two sides to that coin. What a sponsor or an ally does to get you the opportunity and what you do with that opportunity, mm -hmm. right? And because as I was coming up, my mom would always say, don't come in my house talking about the glass ceiling, right? We have, let's talk about the sticky floor. What are you on? Mm -hmm. What are you taking charge of doing? Those people. Now, Kim Humphrey can give everybody an opportunity, but what they do with that opportunity it's just as critical as getting the opportunity, hmm. right? Like, 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 like you, you, the old saying says, I can take you to the water, but I can't make you drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so people have to embrace it. And so uh, DE&I, again, centers on ownership both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and in my, 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 my panel discussion, these are going to be around real topics around the new workforce, right? That, that inclusion redefine the opportunities. Pete, right? what did you do when you had to put a plant leader that was a female, black, in a plant that never had a female or minority leader and they had record results? What made you think that that opportunity would come to fruition and deliver results. This is what the panel will be about. Billy Taylor going out and saying, in the absence of ownership comes blame. Let me explain what that means. Giving the audience a demonstration, letting them fail so that they can see what I'm talking about, and then let the panelists answer those questions. Mm -hmm. And so these, this panel will talk about opportunities from the leadership perspective, opportunity from the diverse group that's out there leading, opportunities for each organization. So the panel will be a little different, but that's what I mean by being intentional, deliberate, right? Because, as, and I'm going to go to your house. Leaders that think they control or own everything will definitely fail. Mark, and I don't think it'll be one of their favorite mistakes either, okay? <laughs> now, what I mean by that Good leaders put people in the play in places to thrive, to grow. Mm -hmm. They present the challenges in front of them that will help them grow. Now, again, you hear me say a lot of my, my mom, my, my mom's quotes. Uh, she was here this weekend, so I got a few more of those billyisms that I can bring with me to the conference. Yeah. But my favorite quote was when my brothers and I were talking about some of our struggles and how she never kind of got into our struggles, she would listen. And her comment was, if I fight your battles, I steal your victories. Mm, wow. If I fight your battles, 
I'll steal your victories. If I support you, I'll enable you to be the victor. And so those are the things that are challenges around leaders. And some leaders, they, their egos grow when they get to bigger roles. And that's when the challenges really start when you get to bigger roles. Yeah. That's when you have to get a real comfort zone where you're letting go without letting loose. Well, it's uh, all very well said. And, you know, what, what your mom said there reminds me of, you know, similar thought I've heard in different words. Um, you know, John Shook, formerly of Toyota, saying basically when a leader jumps in and solves a problem for somebody, they are robbing them of the opportunity to grow. I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, uh, I think he used the phrase, the words robbing. You're robbing somebody of the opportunity to learn, to grow, to develop and I think that, that that seems like an important balance as as a leader. Don't um, don't steal that from somebody. That's right. That's right. And those are the things that that, that grow us, that make us valued. All right. When people trust us, we feel valued. We feel right. We feel emp empowered. Um, you know, in relationships, the biggest thing is our value proposition. Mm -hmm. If we feel valued. Right. If, if, if we feel if we don't feel value, then we tend to check out. Yeah. Or, or migrate to those things that show us value or make us feel bad. Right. Right. That's why we like nice clothes. That's why we, we get our hair cut. We, that's why we wash our car. It makes us feel a little more value. <laughs> makes yeah. us even if it's personal. Right. Right. Well, Billy, I value your perspectives. I know AME does. I know the audience um, will for um, not, not just your um, keynote panel discussion, but for everything um, that's being offered at the AME International Conference. So as uh, we wrap up here, uh, again, it's being held in Cleveland, October 30th to November 2nd. I plan on being there. I hope people will um, go and, and register if they haven't already done so. Again, AME org. Um, Billy Taylor joining us today again, uh, CEO of Linked XL. The website is linkedxl.com, correct? Yes. yes, that is correct. Okay, okay. Is that, I didn't want to make another mistake there. I'd like to. Oh, you're good. You're great. <laughs> like, I'm done uh, with mistakes at least for a little while. And again, Billy's book is called The Winning Link. Um, the panel discussion again is titled Inclusion Redefined. Unlocking potential, fueling innovation, and empowering success. Um, great goals, and you know I like the way those those goals and outcomes are stated there in the panel. Um, Billy, thank you for joining us today. I'll, I'll let you, you know, if, if you'd like to kind of close with a final word or, or thought for everybody. Absolutely. I, I, you don't want to miss this conference. It's over a thousand people have already registered. Uh, the buzz is, is, is as it's getting closer. The groundswell, if you look at LinkedIn, a lot of back and forth. You got, I call them lean legends. Uh, operational action icons are going to be there. It's your perfect opportunity to interact and engage. When you're talking about inclusion, you can walk right up to those people that have written those books, that have hosted those workshops, and they'll be honored to answer your questions, right? Mm -hmm. They are people too. Yeah. Remember when I said make people visible, they'll make you valuable. So go to the conference, build those networks. This is going to be a great conference. I'm looking forward to it. You know, actually, my son's coming now. He's already getting engaged. So the buzz is even coming into my household. So <laughs> you don't want to miss this conference. I'm getting there early. Let me say that. Yeah. Well, good. So uh, we'll hope to see everybody there. Uh, Michael posted a, a question here. Um, the answer is yes, there will be a link. His his He was losing the sound um, that might have been on his end. But yes, this is being recorded um, for anybody who wants to come back and check things out if they joined late. So um, Billy, thank you for doing this. I almost joined an hour late. So again, thank you for reaching out and pulling the end on cord and giving us a chance to correct. We, uh, we caught the mistake early enough that it wasn't a huge failure. So thank you for that. That's right. No, thank you. And, and thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, to work with you. Uh, again, I remember we did 
the my favorite mistake the first recording we had tremendous success mm -hmm. uh, i talk about it all the time uh outstanding uh show um but just your leadership in industry and again i'm being totally sincere is game changing it's game changing thank and you so uh continue to do what you do and, and be deliberate right about what you do and how you do it and so the thing that i'll say is trust mm. and so i appreciate you having me on the show thank you thank you for all that and thank you for being here billy look forward to seeing you soon absolutely see you at the conference see you there <laughs>